Hello everybody, this is Frank so Bobbin here with a slightly different video than normal. This video was a school project that I worked on for quite a while, and the video itself was a lot more complicated to make than I thought it would be, so the editing might be a bit choppy in some places. However, that doesn't detract from the overall quality of the video, so I hope that you get something out of it. Enjoy! Hello everybody, and welcome to this tutorial on Lua scripting in Scenarios for Train Simulator. This tutorial is not for beginners and you will already need to know how to make basic scenarios for Train Simulator before getting into Lua. Now there is some stuff that I'm just going to copy and paste into the script, so I'm going to put whatever I copy and paste in the description of the video so you can do the same. So once we've set up the basics of our scenario, the first thing we need to do is click on this box here called Script. This window will pop up and we click Open Folder. Next thing we need to do is create a new text file and name it scenario script.lua, like so. And when it asks to save changes, say yes. Now we open up the file we just created. From here, I'm going to paste in some stuff. This is important stuff that the script needs to work correctly, but don't worry about it for right now. So now we go down to the bottom of the text where we type out some stuff as follows. Function, on event, open parentheses, event, close parentheses, and then end below it. Then below that, we type out function, test condition, open parentheses, condition, close parentheses, and then end below that. So now that we have the foundation of our Lua script, it's time to add some features to make sure our script is working. First, we're going to code in an HTML pop-up message. To start, we're going to go back into the timetable view and add a new message box and name it intro. Make sure the name of your message box matches the name of the event code into the script. Back in our script, we can type out as follows if open parentheses event space double equals space quotation mark intro quotation mark close parentheses then and below that syscall with a capital C as you can see I've pasted in a line of code after that this is so our HTML message pops up in the game you can actually change this line of code so your HTML message pops up in other ways, but to keep it simple, I'm just going to leave it at the default settings. Next thing we need to do is type in even more stuff. We make some space between the bottom of all the green stuff and function on event, and then type out function start display intro open parentheses close parentheses, and then end below that. And then we can paste in another line of code. Next thing we're going to do is create a new folder within the scenario folder called EN. It must be typed out exactly like this. Then we can paste in our HTML file. This is one that I prepared earlier. One thing to note, make sure that the name of your HTML file matches what you have in your script. And that's our Lua script complete to where our HTML message should pop up. Now we need to make sure that the game reads our script. From here, we open up the script window in the timetable view and click reload. As you can see, my script has a problem. Luckily, the game tells me where to look so I can do some troubleshooting. Turns out that I was missing an end word that's supposed to go here. And this time, the game happily loads in the script with no problems at all. Now we click compile slash generate MD5, and we can load the scenario to check to make sure that our script is working. And presto, our pop-up message is working just fine, and the script is working the way it's supposed to. So now that we've covered the foundation of Lua scripting, let's add some more. Now I'm going to show you how to add some cinematic cameras. First thing we're going to do is go into the timetable view and add a new message box and name it cameras. Then we go back into our script and make some space so we can type out if open parentheses event double equals cameras in quotation marks and in close parentheses. Then after that, go down a line and hit tab, then type in syscall open parentheses quotation mark camera manager colon activate camera quotation mark colon quotation mark camera quotation mark comma zero close parentheses quotation mark with comma and below that we put an end I'm also going to copy the word camera to the clipboard for reason you'll find out in a moment now that we have all that set up we close the time table view and set up these cinematic shots from here we want to go into the mist bag and place down a cinematic camera. Double click on the camera and then open up this window on the right. Now we position where we're looking at where we want the camera to look. 
and in the right window we click on the middle arrow that's named look at. That's now moved the camera to where we were looking. Now we can reposition our view to where we can place a second camera. Then we click the arrow with a plus on it called add control point. And to make sure the camera is looking where we're facing, we click on look at. And now to add a third camera or any more cameras, we just rinse and repeat. Next thing we need to do is set up the timing between each camera. I recommend starting out with 5 seconds. Next we can test play our cinematic intro. While it looks cool, it's a bit slow so I'm going to lower the time to speed up the flow of the cinematics. Now that we have that done, we're going to insert the word camera into the name box. Make sure it's exactly how you typed it in the script. Now before I move on, I'm going to go into the timetable view and make a small change to the intro message command. And I'm going to delay it by a few seconds so it pops up when the cinematic is finished. Now we can go back into the script window in the scenario editor and click reload. And then compile slash generate md5. And there you have it, a successfully coded cinematic intro piece. Next trick I'm going to show you is lockable and unlockable controls. These are basically a pair of commands that work with each other so your train controls are disabled for a small period of time. These commands are triggered by events just like the intro message and the cinematic cameras that we just coded. In some cases, you'll have to create new events for these commands to work. But for this tutorial, I'm going to code in the commands using already existing events. We officially begin this process by making some more space in our script and then typing out if open parentheses event double equals cameras in quotation marks and close parentheses and then. And below that syscall open parentheses quotation mark scenario manager colon lock controls comma close parentheses and whatever that mark is called. And of course end at the bottom. Now to unlock the controls, we make some more space and type out if open parentheses event double equals intro in quotation marks then. And below that syscall open parentheses quotation mark scenario manager unlock controls with the colon in between and colon close parentheses and whatever that mark is called and the obligatory end at the bottom. Now once again we can go back into the script window in the scenario editor and click reload and compile and generate MD5. And now we have the controls locked for the duration of the cinematics and then unlocked when the intro message pops up. Pretty useful so our train doesn't start up while the cinematics are playing. Next trick I'm going to show you is something simple but a bit complicated to code. This is displaying recorded messages, aka being able to bring back up previous messages in case you need to reread an instruction because you forgot about what it said. To start we're going to create some space between the green stuff and the function start display intro command. Now we can just paste in a whole bunch of stuff. You're best off just copying and pasting this whole thing because it's a whole bunch of stuff that must be typed out exactly right or else your script will become broken. Next we need to make a new line between if event double equals intro then and syscall scenario manager blah blah blah. And in this new line we type in display recorded message intro in quotation marks and parentheses and make sure that the start of your words are, are capitalized just like I have here. Once that's done, it's the usual go back into the script window in the scenario editor and click reload and compile and generate MD5. As you can see, the first time I ran this, something wasn't working properly, but if you just copy and paste the load of stuff that goes in between the green stuff and the function start display intro command like so, then it will fix everything and your scenario will work just fine. Now we can test to make sure our new function is working. To do so, we simply bring in the F4 HUD and click on the blue button with the letter on it. So that covers that, now onto something more exciting, audio. In this case, I'm going to code in two audio files which will work as announcements. First thing we're going to do is place down a destination marker right after the platform. This will trigger the departing announcement. Now we're going to go down to the next station stop, which in this case is Bridgeport, and place down another destination marker right before the platform. This will trigger the arriving announcement. Now we're going to set up the triggers in the timetable view. These will be set up as go via objectives so we can drive right over them and trigger the audio. We're also going to add a message box which will act as the event that sets off the audio. Once that's all set up, we can go back into the script and write some more code. We're once again going to make some more space and then type out if event double equals 
depart in quotation marks, then, and in between that and end, Cisco scenario manager colon play dialogue sound, quotation mark, comma, and insert dot wave in quotation marks, and then they close parentheses. And then in the next line down, Cisco scenario manager colon stop dialogue sound and insert dot wave. Kind of like we did before, but of course I like different. As you can see, I misspelled dialogue. Now we're going to open up the EN folder that we created earlier and paste in our audio files. These are the ones that I made earlier. Next, we're going to copy the name of the audio file that we want to play first to the clipboard and paste it where we put insert.wave. On the side note, make sure that your audio files are in the WAV format. I don't think any other file formats will work. For the second audio file I want to play, I'm just going to make some space and copy and paste what I just wrote and change the event name to arrive and change the file named second audio file name. And now it's the usual go back into the script window in the timetable view and click reload and compile generate MD5. However, the first time I did it, I ran into a problem. I couldn't work out the problem at first, but then I realized that I misspelled dialogue. Once I did that, I could successfully reload the script. Now, if we drive over the marker in the game. Next stop, Bridgeport. And there you have it. We now have audio programmed into the scenario that plays on command. And for good measure, here's what happens when you make the same mistake I did and misspell something. The audio doesn't play at all. It can get frustrating when something doesn't work and you have no idea why, so keep it simple and troubleshoot until you can figure out what's not working. Well, that's all there is to Lua Scripting and Train Simulator that I'll be showing for today. There is some more to it, but I wanted to keep it simple for today. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in whatever I make next.